You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get the last word. Line podcast part of the alberta podcast network powered by atb this is july the 2nd 2018 with you today is myself carl and the always wonderful joel joel how was your canada day oh it was the greatest canada day ever the rodeo was good uh we didn't go to the rodeo it was raining oh Okay, that's that's unfortunate. So you you missed the rodeo. Did you make it to the chuck wagon races at the end? So fireworks? No, um, I also got sick. I had a fever yesterday. My son also had a fever yesterday. Is the only thing that could cure your fever John Tavares? As a matter of fact, it is. You woke up today 100%. You're fine? Oh, I am ready to go. Uh, no calling in sick to the show. Uh, oh, it's a great day. Isn't it, Carl? Isn't it just such a great day? I'm still uncertain how, how I feel about this new world that I woke up to. A world where Maple Leafs fans will not stop talking about John Tavares. But th- th- that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about what happened with NHL free agency and everything that went down uh, yesterday on Canada Day, some trades, some signings, but the biggest signing of them all, John Tavares to the Maple Leafs. Joel, your thoughts? Uh, it, it just feels right, doesn't it? Doesn't it just feel right that J- Johnny T comes home, plays? Did you did you see the tweet where everyone saw the tweet where Mister Little Little Johnny in his bed with his Leafs gear, sleeping? It's, it's devils wear. Devil Wears Prada poster on the wall. Uh, and then uh, Gamma Dubez, she uh, tweets out, Welcome home, Jonathan Tavares. Oh, it's just... <laughs> Did that, that happen? Oh, yeah. Why do I not follow Kyle Dubez's grandma on Twitter? That's oh, what I need she, to know. She's great. So she was recruiting Tavares on Twitter all week. She was like, Hey, John, it's great to be in Toronto. You should come play for the Maple Leafs. Just... It's great. Is, um, that, is that not tampering? Like, cause can Kyle ask his grandma to go do things? Because if so, we need every family member of every NHL team to start doing this. I believe there was. I, I'm pretty sure there was a, a grandma from the Sharks. One of the Sharks players' grandma was recruiting Tavares. But this was during, like, the legal tampering week. So I think it's legal. Why, like... I don't. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Okay. Uh, but so you're happy, obviously. Oh, like what? Why, how could I not be is happy? The, is there any? Is there any comparison? Like, what about this? How does this compare to when you won the draft lottery? Better? Oh, I think so. Yeah, because this is like this is John Tavares. He's Mister Canada. He's won gold medals. He's he's coming home. Oh, it's just so good. I've already got my jersey lined up. Is, have you set you settled on it? Getting match uh, ones for you and the boy. I don't know if we're both going to Vera's, but one of us is definitely going to Vera's. Well, that's nice. It's nice that you you know by the time that you sort it out, you might actually you know have uh, all the guys still on the team. Because oh. we we all know TSN wants Nylander gone even more now. They didn't talk about it yesterday, but give him a couple of days and that'll happen. They're not trading Nylander. Like, unless, like, like you've got to get, you got to get, like, a Dougie Hamilton type player. Like, that would, like, if you had been like, yeah, Nylander for Dougie Hamilton, okay, I would have bought that. But, like, you're not, tra- like, did you see the, the, what is it, Chris Tanev? Who's, which the ones the Canucks? Yeah, Chris Tanev. They were like, oh, yeah, Nylander for Tanev, straight up. And I'm like, nobody's doing that. Like, the Canucks aren't even that bad that they're going to even offer that. They're not even – they're just like, oh, we know this is horrible. We're not even going to worry about that. Yeah. So I I wouldn't be shocked if the Leafs trade a Nylander. Like, that's that's the guy if they do trade one. But they're, I don't think they're trading him. they they got to get something really, really good for him. Uh, 
Well, so. the, I guess now do we just talk about John Tavares the entire rest of the summer? Is that what we do with, with the lack of hockey? We just dive very oh. deep into the life and times of John Tavares? Probably. I'm I'm very excited about this. Absolutely. As you as you should be. Um I think you said to me yesterday, I was I was throwing some shade at you and you said stop being jealous like you're you're just jealous and i was like yeah 100 percent i'm jealous like how can i not be jealous my team had cap space everyone needs a center and i would have loved to have him but i i don't get him um are, are you surprised that he actually moved like this is the first fairly like since kovalchuk would that be the last guy that yeah, actually this moved? is like this is bigger news than kovi like the the fact of him going to a set like the the hub of hockey media we're going to be inundated with all of this um yeah up until what saturday yesterday was sunday saturday night once the islanders could no longer hand him that eighth year i still thought that they were the front runners to sign him uh and as soon as that happened i was like oh great now he's going to toronto it's over now. Now we get to deal with this. Yeah, I, I am surprised. Um, I get his reasons though. Like, I'm not upset at him about what he did or why he did it. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's well, there are there are lots of people that are upset with him and how he did it. Well, so do we? Let's let's talk about that for a second. We have a very special guest with us today, uh, sitting across from me on the Skype. I have on one screen someone in a New York Islanders hat and on the other screen, someone in a Toronto Maple Leafs hoodie. Uh, so with us today is Matt host of the reasons are several podcast and lifelong New York Islanders fan. Matt, welcome to the show. My condolences. Joel likely has none, but I won't speak for him. I'd like, I'd just like to thank John Tavares for all his service on the Island. And uh, it's been really great having him as a player on the team. I'm going to just keep it real official. <laughs> this, this is going to be as boring as the John Tavares press conference was yesterday. Well, I mean, you guys talked joked about having it turn into a Tavares uh, show all summer. He's a pretty boring guy, so you're going to run out of stuff pretty quick. <laughs> this is regular uh, Jonathan Taves over here. <laughs> so I, I would like to point out that I did offer condolences on Twitter yesterday, and they were sincere. I uh, I don't feel bad at all that he's on my team. Like let's. You that's there's no don't feel sorry about that at all. But uh, but I can imagine I can imagine what it feels like to lose the franchise. So. Yeah, I know you've been fairly humble. Uh, you've been kind of tampering your uh, excitement and I appreciate that. But I've gone through a wave of emotions over the past, I don't know, week, really, because for the longest time I thought, you know, he's not going to leave. He's going to stay. Uh, just given his nature and who he is and all that, I just thought he would. And really, given all the changes they made, I thought he saw, you know, maybe some signs of life uh, after being on an organization that was so horrible for so many years. Because that's the one thing I got to, you know, give props to the guy for is he made some really tough seasons bearable just by being kind of the lone bright spot. So I don't, I don't have a lot of hatred. I mean, a lot of people that I follow on Twitter, a lot of the Islanders crew is is really mad and there's a lot of bitter comments coming out and i'm one of those people i don't i don't try to get st you know sucked up into that just because why even bother but i certainly am hurt i it sucks because you know I, I thought they really had a chance to turn into something with him still there but um at the same time i mean i t i tend to side with players in these situations like i don't side with ownership or management you know because i play i place most of the blame on the management i mean they 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 screwed up they they dragged their feet with snow. They let him go on too long, and they didn't lock Tavares up, and then they didn't get anything for him at the trade deadline. So a lot of the blame I put on them more so than Tavares. Do you – are you – one of the big things that I've seen people upset about was how long he waited to let people know where he was going. But mm -hmm. he – it sounded like from well, from his press conference, he basically said it was up until like he was leaning the Leafs like – thursday friday but he even said he's like saturday was like the toughest day because i had to make he's like i was trying to make that decision do you believe that he still didn't make a decision until saturday or i think he knew for a lot longer than that um but i don't think he wanted to admit it and it, i you ever 
you ever date a girl and you know you want to break up with her, but you feel bad, so you just don't, you can't lower the blow there, and you just are like, oh, maybe it could work, and that's what it felt like. He just didn't want to let it go, and in the end, much like in that situation in a relationship, people just say, well, you just made it worse because you just dragged him along. That's essentially what he did. So that's that's my only real beef with it is just some of the handling of it could have been done better because they could have had a little more opportunity to do some things. Sitting there all weekend or at least for about 24-hour period and watching free agents fly off to other destinations, knowing in the back of my mind that Tavares was going to probably leave was pretty brutal because I was like all the any opportunity they have to better their team is just going – it was just flying by while while he's sitting there, you know, contemplating. Well, and I, I think I I looked at it and as I was uh, driving up to camping yesterday and watching this happen and seeing the teams that could maybe sign him s- get rid of their cap room, right? Like mm-hmm. you saw, like like Dallas was in it, quote unquote. They started signing guys. Boston started signing some guys, and then you know New York. I don't. I assume that they could have signed someone. I don't know why. <laughs> like with with all due respect, the fact that you you brought in what Uncle Leo and Valtteri Filippula, and I, there was someone the, else. I forget who. No, that's uh, that's it. The, 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 everything else, everything else was just them re-signing guys they already had. It was you know they right, re-signed Hickey. Hickey. Yeah, they re-signed uh, Gibson, the goalie. I, it just they weren't doing anything. And well, so I don't, I don't think Komarov is going to be the guy, the answer. <laughs> oh, oh, as someone who has watched Leo Komarov play, he is certainly not the guy. <laughs> and why such a long deal? I don't get that. Like with Flippy, at least it's a short, you know, deal. I just, I don't understand it. Everything until now, the second, you know, Lou came in, I was so excited because I have watched this organization just spin its wheels for so many years. And watching somebody come in, take immediate action, change the culture, which was, you know, described as a country club mentality, the way that the, the culture was in that locker room. They just people can get away with anything. There was no accountability. Then they get trots. Then they have an awesome draft. I mean, all the momentum in the world. Something. And yeah, I think Tavares sees that he's going to he's going to want to come back. And then this is just a total gut shot. Now it's like, what do you do next? Well, and, and uh, that is the thing. We'll see how they do this year. Obviously, they got a lot worse. Right. Oh, absolutely. A, a lot, lot worse. Where, where do you, Matt, see them finishing this year in that division? It, it's a tough division as it stands. They didn't make the playoffs in it last year. Are they now the worst team in the Metro? It's an impossible division. I mean, regardless of how good they are, that division is brutal. You know, and I did, I did our little write up last year for the Islanders and where they finish. And I started to write it and I thought, yeah, they'll make the playoffs. Then I got through and I was looking at the other teams. I was like, no, they won't. <laughs> Look at that division. So I don't see – I see them getting worse by – I mean they had a horrible season anyway, but they're probably going to be you know, worse than last year. I, I do like the direction the, the, the club's going in, and I think in a couple of years they're actually – you know, will be a pretty decent squad. With Tavares, could have been a contender, you know, but they haven't addressed any issues. Look what they still have – look what they're still faced with. Halak left, not that he was the answer. So Grice is still there. Their goaltending situation is a mess. Their defensive situation is a mess. And you lost your best player. So how, how are you going to get better from that? The one thing with Lou, you'll get a goalie. He's always, like, he always gets a goalie. Like, yeah. that's the one, like, his tracker. So he had, he had Bruder, then he brought in Schneider, then he brought in Anderson in Toronto. Like, you, you're going to get a goalie. That'll be, it's just a matter of which one. Uh, well, I was thinking, I was thinking, um, you know, Gar Snow is still employed by the Islanders for some reason. I don't know why. I, I think they just put him in a corner and have him play with his crayons. But I think the one thing they could do is just have him go to Edmonton and pull Cam Talbot out of there somehow. Because Edmonton seems to be his only his only victory spot. Well, that, sound, that sounds like a win to me. Um, Matt, thank you very much for taking some time to share your thoughts on the Tavares. To, uh, hopefully this was healing for you. Um, <laughs> I hope it wasn't more hurt than heal. Uh, but thank you. All the best to you and the Islanders this year. Th- thank you very much. And uh, uh, Joel, good luck. Take good care of him. <laughs> oh, oh, we will. We will. <laughs> now, I appreciate you guys having me on. It, it's, it's helped to talk about it. Like I said, I, I went through a lot of stages of grief over the weekend. So I think I'm at the point now where it's like I just want to move on. Like I said to Joel, I think on Twitter, 
it's just the, the, the horrible part is I have to wait now till October to even watch them play. And so I just have to sit here and stew on this. But good luck to John. <laughs> yeah, and you can find Matt over at uh, Reasons Are on Twitter, ReasonsAreSeveral.com. Matt, thank you very much. Enjoy enjoy the off season. Find some ways to enjoy it. Maybe I'm uh, going to play some golf or do something else. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, Joel, uh, lots of other things happen. Before we get into the rest of what happened with NHL free agency, let's remind everyone about ATB. ATB.com slash listens. Head over there, and you can find out the ways that ATB can work with you to meet your banking needs. They have many services, residential, commercial, whatever you need out of a bank, they are there for you. ATB.com slash listens. Let them know what you need, and they will listen. That's a great thing. Lots of people, lots of moves happening yesterday. We we talked lots about the Leafs. Any other thoughts that you have on the Leafs? Because really, the only th- like they brought in Jordan Subban and Josh Juris. Who really cares? Like uh, Marley defenseman. That's what right. they are. Yeah. Um. Then they brought uh, JVR, Tyler Bozak, the aforementioned Uncle Leo, and Roman Polak all off the team, which is a, a sizable amount. That's four starters from this team last year. Um. Up front, that's what you, you have 18. Four of the 18 guys who were regulars on this team are gone. You replace them with John Tavares. I, I, you know, not to spend too much time on the lease. I think that's a, a fair trade. You know, Leo uh, and Polak, you wanted gone anyway yeah. so that there was no excuse to play them. It's yeah. Good. So like, so like you got Kapanen, you've got, um, Andreas Janssen. Like those guys are taking over those spots of Leo and JVR and like not say like Kapanen and Janssen, they're not JVR. JVR was, is a good player. So he's going to be missed. But again, you're putting, you're replacing whoever that you're replacing Bozak with Tavares, which is right. You're replacing your second, third line center with a top five, top 10 center in the league. The difference between Kapanen and Janssen and JVR is much less than the difference between Tyler Bozak oh, and John Tavares. For sure. So it'll be interesting. I think uh I, I think we're everyone's waiting for the Matthews the Matthews contract to come in. You got Matthews and Nylander. We'll see if Marner gets done this year. I doubt it. Um but do you, are you surprised are you surprised that Tavares took less money to go to Toronto? That's the one thing that we didn't talk about. No, I, I'm not. Like if you, if you want to be with your hometown team, you do what it takes, right? Like he got paid. Sure, he he left what two million per year on the table. Fourteen four, on the four, table. Four, Fourteen million over the entire course of it. Um, and then I the math with the Islanders because they offered eleven seven five, I believe, over eight. Yeah. So like the the length you lose it on that extra year, but um, no, I'm not surprised. I think that's but a, a thing be- that you do. He's going to be 34 when he's done this deal. It's not like he's going to be old when he's done this deal. Like no, uh, he'll still get another deal after this. Uh and he'll and like he can make up that 14 million in endorsements if he really wants to or he can choose not to. Like or, right. It he is not going to be hurting for money. I know I yeah. know it it's hard for me to be like I just turned down 14 million dollars. I would not turn down 14 million. There's a lot of things I would do for that, but um <laughs> Yeah, that's that. That's the thing that you can do when you're already making seventy seven. So, what about JVR? Let's go start rolling down some of these other teams. So JVR signed with uh, Philly. Yeah, he JVR. signed. He got. We we talked a lot about Evander Kane and JVR at the same time when Evander signed his deal. He got the same amount of money, two years less. Yeah. Uh, seven million for five years, and that's a you know JVR twenty nine years old. He's still a, a very talented gifted score um you put him on that flyers team they got better this like this off season uh i i don't blame them for this deal at all it's a good deal it's not a great deal but it's good um i don't think they'll greatly regret it especially like i'm okay the shorter the term the more i like any of these deals i think that'll be like a, a repeat thing for me that, through this whole thing most of the terms i'm okay with if you don't have a super long deal. So they didn't go seven on him. Um, I like that for the flyers and uh, JVR is obviously getting paid. Yeah. I think, I don't think they'll regret, like it's one of those deals that I think he'll just, he'll live up to. He won't exceed, but he won't, 
unless he falls off a cliff, which I don't see happening. Um, but that'll be... If you're getting 30-plus like, goals for $7 million, you're not sad, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. So that's... Um, I think that, I think it's about right. I, I would have been surprised if he had gotten less than the seven. Yeah. Um, side note, before we get into any of the other stuff, um, if you do want to remedy a mistake that I had made, uh, on Twitter, Grandma Doobie, G-R-A-M-M-A-D-U-B-I-E, Grandma Doobie, you can follow, uh, Marietta Dubas on Twitter, just like we do now, so... Oh, and I just got a message from Matt that it was Pavelski's grandma that tried to get him into San Jose. There we go. Joe, so Joe Paz, grandma, and uh, and Marietta doing what it takes. Um, yeah. So JVR's there. Uh, we can go to let's let's camp on the Blues for a little bit. That's where Tyler Bozak ended up. The Blues made a flurry of trades. And signings yesterday doing a lot to this team. Tyler Bozak, again, um, not a, not a terrible deal. Three years, five million dollars for a guy who's going to be, um, you know, a, a top two or three center on that team. And that's fine. I, I was actually, I really like that. Like, I, I'm a Bozak fan. He's the guy, like, he's that guy that's been on the lease forever, been consistent. So, like, obviously I'm very biased. I was surprised at how little he got. I thought he'd get at least, like, I thought he was going to be more in the five years at four million as opposed to three years at five. That's kind of what I thought he was going to be, but I think the Blues will like this deal. Yeah, and that, I don't think there's, there's not a ton of difference between the two of those deals. Um, but then the, the Blues weren't done there. Uh, after adding one center to their team, they went out and added another one making a trade, probably the, the, well, not probably, the biggest trade of the deadline week. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly going to St. Louis for prospect Tage Thompson, Patrick Berglund, Vladimir Sabaka, a first and a second round pick. It's a lot of pieces for Ryan O'Reilly, a guy who claimed, and th- this is, this is my, my thoughts on it. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, as I might have a tainted perspective because of his, uh, his issues in Colorado. But Ryan O'Reilly is a guy who, by the time he was done in Colorado, he wasn't wanting to be part of that team. By the time he was done in Buffalo, he said that he, he didn't enjoy playing hockey anymore. And so I look at this and I'm like, as much as everyone talks about the Evander Kane ish, issues, quote unquote, that you could have, I'm not excited if I'm adding Ryan O'Reilly to my team, especially for as many pieces. There's no great, fantastic pieces. If this trade works out and the Blues are good, that first round pick is not going to be great. This is a lot of pieces. I like this trade for the Sabres a lot. I'm okay about it for the, for the Blues. I can't believe how much the Sabres got for Ryan O'Reilly and including like the Blues paid his, his, uh, signing bonus. Yeah. So he had what, a seven, bonus. seven and a half million dollar bonus due last night. Blue picked that up as well as all these pieces. So that, and, and that's true. This is like, this is the low version of the trade. If they had awaited and made this trade today, um, they would have had to pay even more assets. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused with the Blues doing because then they went and signed David Perron for four by four, which is like that's crazy, right? Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, I for David thirty Perron's year old fine, David, but he's like he's he's always injured, is he not? Yeah, he's he's not the most reliable of, of health guys, and and for me, it's uh, a question of like, what do you think he is? David Perron has scored twenty goals once in his career. He has Twice. had three times. Tw- okay, sorry. I, I I was I was looking back to where it was. Last time he did that, 2013-14 with the Oilers. Like, that's yeah, not, he had- that's not something to get super excited about. We're not looking at David Perron saying like this is a a game changer for the Blues. This is a team now with a lot of uh a lot of talent up front. If you if you look at this team, if you were to say cuz now you can have you can have a top line where you're throwing out I don't know what they're going to... I haven't actually thought much about it, but let's say you have O'Reilly, Tarasenko, and Steen as your top line, or Schwartz, or Braden Shen. Like You've got a lot of options there. You can have Tyler Bozak as your second line. You can have 
uh, Braden Shen. Like if you're using a Leafs esque mentality, you've got a lot of options down the middle of this team, which is great. That's what you want. Uh, you get a healthy Robbie Fabry in there. Uh, yeah, Jake, I don't Jake, know. Jake Allen returns to a competent Jake Allen. Um, this team could be good. The, the amount that we, we thought this Blues team was going to be good last year and then Jake Allen was mediocre. A lot of things happened. They had some, some injuries. This team could still be good. Yeah. And they should be good. I just, I don't know. It's confusing. Like, it's just confusing. Like, I don't get, like, this is the third time Perron's played for the Blues, hey? Yeah, it's, so like it's he, one of he those started, things. He started, got traded, then eventually made his way back to the Blues. Then he got picked in the expansion draft, I believe, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And then, I don't know. Yeah, so. Well, what else happened? What were, what were, some, of the bigger, what were some of the other big things one uh one other thing that i just wanted to point out that I, that i found very interesting uh jvr signed with the flyers he has signed three nhl contracts somehow all of them with the flyers that's funny yeah so because he's he signed the deal and then was uh dealt for luke shen who also signed with a team today that uh or yesterday that is likely quite irrelevant so um Let's let's talk about my avalanche. Oh, he signed with the Ducks. He's he's in Anaheim. Um, my my avalanche made a couple moves yesterday, uh, and I'm I'm okay with them. Ian Cole going there for three years, four point two five million dollars, a sizable amount of money. But again, going back to my criteria of, um, I'm okay with a, a larger hit on a short term. Three years for that much money, I'm okay with it. Uh, we, we needed to bring in, we needed to do something on defense. There wasn't a lot available and you're gonna, you're gonna pay more in free agency than you would if it's in, you know, your own guy that you're signing up. So, um, I'm okay with this deal. Like it, it's not terrible. Ian Cole, only 29 years old. Um, so it's not to say that he's, he's old. I think it, to me, Ian Cole's a guy who I just like always kind of assumed that he was old. Um, and, as you know, looking at it at the trade deadline and his move uh, to Columbus, and then uh, that I'm, you know, I'm I'm very okay with this deal. He adds some some ability on defense, uh, which we needed. And then yeah, it's kind of whatever. I it on any other like on a on a cap strap team, this is a bad deal. Yes. on a team that doesn't have a problem with cap space, it's a fine deal. Yeah, but it's and, probably an overpay. Yeah, but but again, it brings in a guy who is a a an addition to this team, our defense got, uh, not significantly better, but it got better. Now, you know, you can have Barry, Eric Johnson, Zadorov, Samuel Gerard, uh, likely Patrick Nemeth as our, as our fifth, and then Ian Cole is the sixth. That is a defense core where I like, there is not a guy on there where I'm like, I hate, I hate having this guy on my team as of right now. And I think that's what everyone wants. You, you wanted that with Roman Polak for years. You got it. Um, Goodbye, Roman Polak. So, oh, and then they also yeah. signed uh, Matt Calvert again. Um, the the only I don't thing even know that, who that is. He is a, a former Blue Jacket. One thing that uh, both these guys, former Blue Jackets, Matt Calvert played with the Blues. Um, coach Jared Bednar was the coach of the Blues AHL team, so there's a, a little connection there. Obviously, Ian Cole was not with the Blues when Bednar Bednar was there, but um, this is essentially the guy to replace Blake Como. Como's gone. This is three year two point eight. Again, I'm fine with it. Um, Matt Calvert doesn't excite me, but it's fine. It's you're, you're paying that much for that amount of talent. It's it's whatever. It's good. Is that all? That's all the Avalanche did. That that is what the Avalanche did yesterday. Nothing too crazy. They you know they got their big move out of the way. The week before at the draft, picking up the backup goalie. And, and so looking at the Avs team from last year to this year, Jonathan Bernier gone, replaced with Philip Grubauer. I like that upgrade. Uh, an upgrade on defense, a lateral move with Como and uh, Calvert, most likely. I like it. We got better at two positions. All right. So where do you, you want to go? Where 
So we've got we've some, got uh, some other signings. We've got teams that made terrible mistakes. Um, there's two teams that I think stand out as like other than the Islanders. The Islanders obviously had the worst day yesterday, right? You look at the Islanders. Not and their fault though. No, right? But they're the team that got worse yesterday. There's two teams that stand out to me. Do you want to do re-signings, terrible teams, or just some other random guys who signed places? I want to do not re-signings, terrible teams, because I really want to talk about the Canucks. All right, let's talk about the terrible teams. Let's start with the Canucks. Antoine Roussel, Jay Beagle heading there, both on some fairly substantial deals. This, this team is a disaster, and if it wasn't, like, their front office, in a hockey sense, is quickly becoming one of the worst front offices in the league. Ottawa, their front office is, like, the worst, like, for a bunch of reasons. And, like, they're just, like, miles ahead of everybody. But, like, just in a hockey sense, oh, man. I don't even, like, we don't even really need to talk about this. Nobody thinks Spiegel or Roussel is going to be that, or is going to be good. They got way too long of deals. This especially, is crazy. Especially Jay Beagle. Who, who thinks that handing 32-year-old Jay Beagle a four-year, three million per year deal is a good idea? No one, no one should think that, but someone did. No, Jim that's... Jim Benning did. Jim, it, we need to talk. But, so. The Canucks now have a, a schmattering of, uh, overpaid mediocre players that fill their roster so yeah they're i don't we don't need to talk much more about this this is a disaster of a team uh another team that i think to me stood out as a team that made surprising moves and like just confusing i don't know why you did it and really really detroit you you thomas vanek bringing back mike green a three-year deal for jonathan bernier what are you doing, Detroit? What are you doing? They gave Mike Green a lot of money again. They must just really like him. They were like, like Mike, I know that we didn't trade you at the deadline, so like we have to bring you back so that we can justify this. Like we should have traded you at the deadline. You you were hurt. So we know that your health isn't the best, but we're gonna give you over five million dollars for the next two years. Yeah. And then Van, I don't, I don't get this. Like, Vanek's okay. It's fine. It's like, whatever. It just doesn't make sense for them as a team. Right. Like, cause he had, I think like 24 goals last year. It's decent. Just, why are you doing this? I thought you, you need to be, you need to be, well, they are really bad, but stop, stop wasting money on guys like this. What, what's I mean, nice is that we now know that the, you know, a $3 million cap hit, by the time that he's traded at the deadline, they'll have paid about $2 million of that three in order to get a second round pick back for him. So that's fine. They pay $2 million for a second round pick. That's one way to buy draft picks, I guess. Well, the Leafs did that for several years. So it's not, it's not the worst thing. So yeah, they, those two teams did not have good days yesterday. They just it's just not going to be good days for them for a long time. <laughs> um and and looking at you know, I've, I I left this team out. The one that stood out to me the most in the teams uh losing out and we now like this is like the hard definition, the hard line of you know they're out of the John Tavares sweepstakes when your team signs Ryan McDonough to a big old contract. Tampa Bay given Ryan McDonough a 6.75 per year contract extending him all the way until he is oh it's it's a seven years he's currently 37 30 he's He's gonna gonna be 37 because it doesn't start this year this is an extension it's not a re-signing like he was a ufa this is an extension i don't i don't get it i don't get i don't get it (laughs) What, he, what I extra don't – and again, it has a full no trade clause for six of the seven years. I don't know what team out there is going to be chomping at the bit to trade for 36-year-old Ryan McDonough making $6.75 million. I think that's a little unnecessary, Tampa. The term on that – Really is the no trade clause. It's fine. You don't need to put that in there. Ryan's staying put. If, if Tampa had gone to Ryan McDonough and said, Hey, we will give you a seven year deal extension. We're going to give you five million per year. 
Do you think he takes it? Um, I think he explores free agency. No, I'm a I'm a hundred percent sure this is exactly how this conversation went. Steve Eiserman goes down to McDonough's agent. And he's like, "Hey, he's like, we'd like to sign uh, we'd like to sign uh, Ryan to an extension." He's like, "Oh, okay. Why don't you like send us your first offer?" Uh, and he's like, "Okay." He's like, "Well, how about uh, seven six point seven five?" Agent calls Ryan. He's like, "Sign it now!" Like they don't even negotiate. <laughs> like there's no negotiation. He's just like, "Do it immediately before they realize this is like right." Yeah, it's like, it's not not nice. Tampa with a lot of, you know, they they've had a very strong cap crunch over the years. We've looked at it with, you know, they shipped Flipula out. Um now they have the, you know, the Ryan Callahan deal on the books. They've had, you know, Tyler Johnson uh is is another piece that they wouldn't mind getting rid of. For the through the next 4 seasons, they already have 43 million dollars locked up. That does not include a goaltender. So Vasilevsky is going to get paid. That also doesn't include Nikita Kucherov. So you have $43 million. If you want to keep those two around, we can top that up to what? 60? If I would say that it's, it's not unreasonable to think that Vasilevsky and Kucherov would, would clock in at 17 combined. Kucherov's probably going to, like, unless for some reason they have a weird, you can't make more than Steven Stamkos. But like he should make more than Stamkos. Yeah, Stamkos at eight and a half. Kucherov getting think more. Kucherov should probably get eleven, right? That's what, like, that was kind of my, especially you know you move it back to the, another year, um, and, which means Vasilevsky's probably going to get like eight. So you're thinking, nine, yeah, so over sixty, sixty plus for yeah. one, two, three. And and uh don't forget that that doesn't include uh Sir Sergejev. Sergejev, how do you say that guy's name? Yeah, nailed Ser- it. There you go. That guy's going to get paid too. You think he's going to take anything less than like 7 or 8? No. That guy's that guy's really good. Like Yeah, so that's this, that's this team is so good. This team is so good. They just have they just have money issues for days coming up, and they're not, and they're not helping themselves, right? So like, no, you've got you've got sixty million uh, essentially if they keep Kucherov and Vasilevsky, which you you know that's their hope. Um, sixty million in nine players. That's not counting Sergachev. Um, let's toss that to you know high sixties with him in there. Um, that's an average cap hit of like six point eight, six point seven for ten guys. That is. That's a chunk. You're you're filling it with. You have to start drafting incredibly well. You know, you need the the next Braden Point to come Boot. in. That guy that you look at and you're like, oh, thank goodness he's actually good. You're not going to draft. Well, Braden Point needs a new contract too. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Like like these are and like you're not going to get what yet yeah, Yanni Gord. Gordy, I don't know how to say these yeah, guys' names. You're not going to find he, the Yanni Gord's he, hiding out there. He's only making one million this year. Great, but like he's not going to. You're not going to. He's going to want more than one million at the end of his new de- his deal here. Like this is so. Like I don't get why they chose. It's almost like they chose McDonough over some of these other guys. Like choose and. And I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Well, so far it's not working because they haven't they haven't won with this. But they need to. They're going to have to clear out guys. They're going to have to clear out some guys if they want to sign. If they want to keep all of their better players, and they'll figure out a way to do it. I don't doubt it. It just seems weird. It seems so weird. Yeah, to me, I I look at that and I see you know the the Braden Point example. I think those are the kind of people that you need to be. You need to. I don't. I don't. I don't like you know including. A prospect with a an overpay to tank value, um, but that's an option. Or start trading those guys for just more prospects and just try to keep bringing in entry level guys um, that are good because it's it's not going to work. The the only thing is that it'll it's as long as they have Stamkos, Kucherov, Hedman, Sergeyev, Veslasky, they'll be fine. It's just I don't know how they're gonna. It's going to be interesting seeing how they fit all of these guys in there. Yeah. So then, and, and so. you have that core. If you lock that core up, you're there and you can work with what you have. Steve Eiserman has 
we've questioned him many times in the past and he's managed to make it all work. So, um, I, I have faith that they'll still be good for quite some time. You see, it's funny you say that, but then he like signs guys like Girardi and McDonough to long. Like he, he, he does really good in some places and then he does just things and you're just like, what are you doing? And it's like Babcock. He's a great coach. And then all of a sudden he's playing Roman Polak more than he, anyone ever should. Like, it's it's interesting to see how like even the great GMs and coaches in the league they still have their blind spots. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's a that's a thing, and we've seen that with Eiserman and Babcock. Great examples of that. Um, let's go to I've got I've got a few more on the list that we could touch on here. Uh, J- some rapid fire. Sure, rapid let's, fire. let's do some some rapid fire. Um, let's start with the Jets. The Jets made a deal moving Joel Armia and Steve Mason to Montreal for nothing um, in a move to clear cap space in hopes to bring back Paul Stastny, who did not go to Winnipeg. With that being the case, Winnipeg did not really do anything of note yesterday. Um, Are you still okay with them trading away Armia in order to bring in that cap space if you're not actually going to use it? I mean... I wouldn't have cleared cap space to bring in Stastny, so <laughs> I guess there's also that angle of it. Like, <laughs> like, what are you using it for? Yeah, so I, it's kind of, it's not a huge loss. Armia is not nothing though. He's a good player. Yeah, he's an okay player. Like, they they'll be fine. They're a good team. They just got a, they got a lot of RFAs that they got to deal with this year and in the next. They got, they, they got Truba. Tanev, Dano, Lowry. Like I don't know. I don't know much. Like they get the, I don't know how much those are guys are going to make. But that's probably where they're spending most of their time is getting their RFAs onto deals. Line A's in the same place as Matthews, right? Needs that long term eleven, what ten, eleven, twelve million dollar deal. Yeah, the the big one for sure. Um, Hellebuck, Hellebuck's got to get paid. Yeah, lots to happen there, and so. I, they're not going to use that cap space this year. So for me, I'm like, if you're not going to, sp- if you're not going to spend it, then just, just sit on it. It's fine. You can keep that four million. You can keep Armia, which is an actual piece that you actually used. Steve Mason is at least a moderately competent backup, which I, I'm okay with, but um, I, I was going to say, how do you feel about what the flames did? Let's, let's stick with Stastny for a second. Cause, oh right, where did he, he go? He went to Vegas on oh, a okay. uh, a deal that brought him pulling up the number. It is six and three a half. years, six and a half million dollars. And as a as a former Colorado Avalanche, Paul Stastny was a guy that like I was sad when he left, and then I watched him in St. Louis, and I was like, not sad that we're not paying him seven million dollars to do what he's doing out there. And then he went to Winnipeg and he, he had a, a, a quality playoff, but like a terrible regular season with the, with the Jets and, uh, you know, a fine ish time for the Blues, but nowhere near what you would expect for seven million dollars. Paul Stastny at six and a half million dollars is not something that I am at all excited yeah. about, but Vegas again, they have cap space to burn. This is a, this is a move that you can get away with if you have cap space. If you do not, you, you can't do this. So. Um, you have to wonder if the, you know, 4 million from Mason cleared out, not enough to, to even get Stastny at six and a half. Maybe that was it. Maybe the just just knew that's not a good idea. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of whatever Stastny. It'll be fine. It's not a great deal, but he'll be okay there. They'll, they traded him out for what James Neal essentially is what they did. Yeah. So, and, and James Neal. Um, and yeah, James Neal head into Calgary on a five year, $5.75 million deal. You're shaking your head. This is just classic Calgary. It's such a funny move. He'll be fine. He'll be good. Um, but it's just, I don't know. This is funny. Don't you think it's funny? It doesn't feel like a very classic Calgary type move. Um, no, it doesn't. Cause like, a classic Calgary move would have been to sign, I don't know, like the Uncle Leo deal, I think would be a classic Calgary move. This is a guy, James Neal, somehow has never scored ever in his NHL career, has never scored less than 20 goals. That's impressive. Yeah, it is. And he, like I said, like he'll be, it'll be fine, but like it's, 
I don't know. James Neal is just he's just a very unimpressive player to watch. Like the the least impressive twenty goal scorer ever. Yeah, like it's just kind of whatever, and it's like it'll be fine. I'm surprised they like I'm surprised they paid him as little as they did. Like I figured they would have paid him more for some reason, but I think it'll the, be the length on it. Right, going until he's 35 years old is 35 yeah. year old James Neal is not going to be a nice thing. So though it's kind of like whatever. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be a playoff team. So I know what what. The move that the Flames usually would do is sign Troy Brower to the four and a half million dollar deal. That's the classic Flames move. Um, yeah. But the fact that they've they've spent all that money, the fact that they've you know invested in Michael Frolik at four point three and Troy Brower at four point five means that you actually have to go and sign a scorer to add some offense to this team that neither of those guys can bring to you. So um, I like this move as much as I hate to say it, I like this move for the Flames. They needed to bring in a a James Neal esque player. They got that. Mm-hmm. They got some scoring. It's good. Did Zach Ronaldo get an NHL deal? Oh, it's a two way. Don't worry about it. Goodness, the guy needs to go away. Um, fact that that's not the worst of ideas. Um, who else? James Neal, uh, Carter Hutton to Buffalo. The Buffalo Sabers with you know an interesting. We talked about the O'Reilly trade already. <laughs> Buffalo Sabers bring Carter Hutton in. On a, a reasonable deal, three year, two point seven five. I think anything under three is a good price. Good, yeah. good to great price on Carter Hutton. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's not bad. What about we? Did you did you mention Derek Ryan? I was looking at Zach Ronaldo while you were talking about the flame stuff. Did you mention him and his three three point one or whatever he got? Uh, no, we did did not. You can uh, what? Did you. There was so much talk about him being like the backup plan for all the people that were wanting Tavares. And I was like, that Derek Ryan is not a Tavares backup plan. Like, I could have bought Statsny as the backup plan because, like, you had cap space to burn. But, like, I don't get this. Why would you pay, why would you pay a fourth line center 3.1? Yeah. I think Derek Ryan is an interesting case. I'm curious to see what he does in Calgary because Carolina as a whole, were like just the PDO darlings last year of suck. Like what what's the opposite of a darling? I don't know. I guess what whatever Scott Darling actually did last year is the opposite of a darling. That's what it is. Um, it's true. So, you know, he's a guy who the underlying numbers look quite nice for Derek Ryan. Um and just, you know, he's never actually done and now he's, you know, he's been paid respectively based on those underlying numbers. And so we'll see now that he has that $3 million three-year deal with Calgary, you know, he's going to have a spot in that lineup. Um, slide in as their third line center there. Um, we'll see what he can do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the going back to Buffalo, uh, Carter Hutton, as well as, uh, the trade bringing all the pieces in for Ryan O'Reilly. Um, you know, a, a reasonable day. Obviously, adding uh, Rasmus Dallin also makes this a pretty a pretty good off season for the Sabers. Would you say? I don't know. I they got Dallin, but like, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I don't think they're going to be good. So, so do you think? Where I was having this conversation yesterday. Where do you think the Sabers are in the like, like rebuild to like build to good like? I, I have no I idea. Can't I can't identify even, what they are. I don't even. I don't even. I couldn't even. I could maybe list three guys on their team. That's how much I think about the Sabers. So to like comment on like where they are in their rebuild, I'm guessing very early on <laughs> because because like I don't know. They're yeah. I think I don't know anything about them. They didn't they bring in a goalie. Or there's there talk of them bringing in a goalie? They brought in Hutton, but they were t- there's talk of someone else too. I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't pay attention to Do, Buffalo. The Buffalo Sabers have clearly confused Joel. Quite. They don't greatly. confuse me. They're just off my radar. I don't pay attention to them. <laughs> well, and, they're and bad because that that might be to, to say where they are in their rebuild. The fact that you're like, yeah, I have no idea what's happening with the Sabers. Um, yeah. yeah, they're. I to me, I. I want to think that they're like reboot the rebuild because as soon as you bring in a new GM just during a rebuild, it feels like you just like that's an automatic reboot. 
um, winning the draft lottery helps with that. So I, I feel like they, they're cautiously moving forward because with Tim Murray as the GM, they like tried to make that push, right? They brought in Ocposo and tried to make that push, bringing in the free agents to hit that next level. Didn't work. Um, and now they're, they're doing it a, a different way by bringing in, you know, moving out Ryan O'Reilly, bringing in some extra assets to kind of build alongside of this so that if they do hit, and it does work, then they still have those assets. They can trade them away. It gives them that flexibility, which I think the Sabres team could use. Um, a couple re-signings to talk about. Uh, Drew Doughty coming in eight years, $11 million. And my favorite part about the story, he's staying with the LA Kings. My favorite part about the story is he said, I don't need an agent. He did this eight years, $11 million all by himself. And it, it's almost like you don't, actually need an agent to negotiate when you're one of the best players you just say like i want all the money and they give you all the money uh except it is interesting though like so comparing his deal to Tavares deal like dowdy has zero buyout protection um so because like because because Tavares most of his is like Tavares makes six hundred and fifty thousand a year that's what his ba- that's what his salary is. It's all signing bonuses. Well, and it's not it's it's lockout protection, right? Not not buy it. Well, I, I guess if, no, it's if both. You, it's I both. guess if you were to buy him out, um, somehow if you were to foolishly think that, I, I don't think Drew, Drew Doughty doesn't really have a need of buyout protection. But you're right. Yes, there's it there's is, very little signing bonus in his deal. So and like he doesn't have like his no trade is like basically I think it's like he has a four team no trade clause or something like that. He like it's kind of, so like he got his money, it's fine and he's making and he doesn't lose the 3 to 5% whatever an agent does. But it is like there's a bunch of little things in this deal that people have been pointing out saying like this is why you have an agent so you don't make this mistake and so you don't make this mistake. And so basically, yeah, like so if there's a lockout, all that money that he saved by not by, by not getting an agent, he loses. Yeah, and it's what three percent on eighty-eight million is is two point six four. That's how much John Tavares walked away from each year in San Jose, essentially. Like, yeah, and so and Daddy will lose more than that if there's a lockout. Not if when slash when, when the yeah. these especially with like the lockout proof deals. Um, there's sure. going to be a lot of teams very very much claiming that they're losing money. Uh, the other big re-signing that happened, also sticking in California, Logan Couture, eight years, $8 million to stay in San Jose. Uh, another piece of it, and I, I, at first I looked at this and said to myself, well, there's no way that they're going to be able to bring John Tavares in if they're handing Logan Couture $8 million. And then I, I took a second glance and realized that this team has nobody signed long-term. Uh, Evander, at the time of the signing, it was Evander Kane, Brent Burns, Mark Edward Vlasic, and Martin Jones. Three guys signed f- longer than two years. Now you've added Couture. They've got four guys. Pavelski's still not signed to anything longer. You're not going to sign him to an eight year, but you st- should still sign him, uh, cause you need something. This is a team that, while quite good right now, is on the cusp of the unknown. If you, you know, with these pieces, who knows where they all go and what, what this team becomes. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it makes like, the, I like the Couture deal. Like it's, um, it's an extension though, right? So yes. it doesn't kick in until next year. So he, is it eight years? Eight it's years. Eight. So he's so signed. He's going to be 38. Yeah. And it's that's a bit long. It's, it's a long deal. The Sharks have a lot of those, right? All these guys are signed till they're very, very old, except for which is, Mr. Evander. So, which is what they've done. This is, which is, which is what they've come off of, of Thornton Marlowe, right? Like having guys until they're pretty old. So yeah, they, they're, they're all about the lifelong players there in San Jose, which, you know, as you said, Joel, you would, you would do that. So no, not blaming them for it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, any, any other moves stick out to you? There's, there's lots of other things that have happened. Um, lots of guys signed and, you know, throughout the summer, we might touch on various aspects of it as we're touching, talking about different teams and looking at, um, some of what's happened. But I think to me, these are the big moves of the day. Yeah. Um, 
what, like Riley Nash, he got his deal at Columbus. It was Columbus, I think, right? Is where he went? Yeah. And so, like, he was kind of one of those. He he was interesting. He's like, he reminded me of, like, what, like Matt Bolesky or whatever. He's kind of like that lower tier, but probably going to get more money than he should, but. I don't know, but yeah, he, there was a, but he didn't. I, I yeah. like, he didn't get the Matt Bolesky deal. He got under three, which is, I think, a, a great number for the Jackets. Yeah, I would have thought he got like I would have thought he got more coming off, coming like just how it was talked about around him. But um, so yeah, I don't know. There wasn't. It's actually surprising. There wasn't too many like crazy deals handed out. Like yeah, teams were very reined in. Um, and you know, I think the biggest, the biggest shoes left to drop is probably if slash when Eric Carlson is traded, if they move this year or this off season rather, um, well, you have a, you have and, a couple big names yet on the free agency. Hit me with like, some like Rick Nash. If he That's, decides to play, I was going to say that that was, uh, I was, that was going to be my next topic that I talked about the Rick as oh. speaking of Riley Nash. Um, I do find it interesting that Rick Nash is like, yeah, I might not even, I might not even lace him up next year. Who knows? That's a uh, which, whatever. Like, hey, if he he probably doesn't need to. He's probably like if he's been if he's been good with his money, doesn't need to play if he yeah. doesn't want to. And if you know, health first, which is was his main reason for doing that. Yeah, he's what twenty seven million dollars on his first contract, sixty two on his second. That's eighty nine million plus whatever entry level plus whatever else. Rick Nash does not need to to play hockey if he doesn't want to. Yeah, so. I, I thought that was, so. I think that's interesting. I'll see if someone convinces him to play. But the thing is, the other thing is, is like he's not going to get a deal anywhere close to what he's been making. So that right. might also come into the play. He's like, well, do I want to like maybe like teams might have been only offering him like three million. He's like, well, do I want to drop from seven point eight to three? Mm, no. Yeah, that's a that's a hard no on that one. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll be here through the rest of the summer. We'll be back next week, um, bringing you some of our thoughts on what is what what else is happening. Some of these other trades will uh, will be we'll still be having some fun. Who knows what kind of shenanigans we get up to throughout the summer? Uh, maybe if it stops raining outside, we can have some barbecue talk and actually barbecue something. That'd be nice. Yeah, that would be quite a delightful way to spend the summer. Um. Before we wrap up, I just want to remind everyone about the Alberta Podcast Network, everyone's favorite place for all things Alberta podcasts. Uh, and it's been a while. We've had, you know, a number of things. We had, uh, the conference, we had the survey. Want to remind everyone about the great shows that are happening over there. Um, and I, I'll, I'll highlight this one because of the timeliness of it with the, the happenings of the World Cup, and we've had Mike Laborn on the website writing uh, about a, a weekly article about his thoughts on what's happening at the World Cup. But the Young Gaffers is a show um, that takes a look at soccer. They talk about soccer. They have a lot of great guests on their show, and they they just they touch on everything that's happening in the world of soccer. If you are looking for a great soccer show, um, they are essentially they are the fourth line of soccer. Um, that's how I would describe them. So they are they are us, but a soccer show instead. So Jason and Adam over there, um, they do their thing talking about that. They talk about, uh, you know, MLS, Canadian soccer. Obviously, it's from Alberta, so they're going to touch on all those things. But head over to theyounggaffers.com. You can also find them on all the social media platforms searching for Young Gaffers. And until next week, you can find us on Twitter. Uh, keep those name suggestions coming. We've had some great name suggestions for the uh, the. Name change show. Uh, some good ones coming in. Um, follow the website. Check out what we got going on over there. We're going to have some pieces up throughout the weeks on what, what's been happening in the NHL. So, um, lots of good stuff over there. The fourth line podcast.com at fourth line podcast on Twitter, facebook.com slash the fourth line podcast. Uh, if you give us a review on the iTunes or the Google Play or Spotify, everywhere that we are, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. And we greatly appreciate you listening, especially all the way to the end of the show. We always, uh, we assume most people turn off once we start this pr- ramble. Um, there's always some gems in here. Probably not this week. This week's just facts, just straight facts. Boom city. <laughs>